But how many know we can have fun in the house of God? Man, it is so great to be back at headquarters in California. You know what? Can we wave to everyone online? We got a lot of people watching online. Wave to them. Wave to them. Thank you for tuning in online. Welcome. All over the world are tuning in. Arizona tuning in. And man, I'm so excited to be with you. It's going off and on, huh? Might need another mic, maybe. I'm just so excited to be here. As you're standing to your feet. Oh, there it goes. Cutting off, huh? I can't believe it's been 20 years already. I, I had a lot more brown hair back then. Somebody said, Pastor Weapon, your hair. I said, I don't know. I, I became a campus pastor. You just get, you just get crazy. Too much stress. <laughs> nah, it's in my jeans. You want me, you want me to switch mics? Let's switch. But I can't believe it's been 20 years of ministry. I want to give honor where honor is due before we do any type of teaching. If, if we just stayed here and, and just spent time honoring, here's a, here's a leadership principle. You want to grow? You want to be great? Learn how to honor the people God has put in your life that's helping you grow. Parents, pastors, leaders, DG leaders, even your crazy boss, he's making you grow. And we want to honor Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa. We want to honor them for saying yes. I remember when he called me. As he spoke to Lisa, then he calls, he goes, Robert, it's time. It's time to start the church. Because I already knew it was in him. I already knew we were going to do it. I, I knew it was there. We're just waiting for the time. And how many know God has perfect timing? Perfect timing. God gave him dreams. You've heard some of the stories. And he got those dreams. He goes, Rob, it's time to go now. And I said, what city? Where are we going to go to? He goes, we, I don't have a clue. I don't have all the details. Just be careful. Quit waiting for everything to be perfect before you make a move. There's never perfect conditions. Sometimes you're waiting for all the ducks to line up and it, forget about all the ducks to line up. Once Jesus tells you to do something, it's time to go. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's time to go. Don't be waiting for perfect conditions. So Pastor Marco, we want to honor you and Lisa, I love you guys. You guys are second parents to me. I would not be the leader. I would not be here. I, for you guys who don't know, I was in Florida for, for a while, and I got kicked out of high school. I sprayed tear gas all over the school. If you do that today, that'd be a terrorist act. You'd probably be in prison. So thank God that was a lot of years ago. And I got in trouble. My dad said, man, what are we going to do with Robert? We don't know what we're going to do. This guy's out of control. My mom said, send him to Pastor Mark. Send him to Marco's house. And if he doesn't get it there, I don't know what we're going to do with that guy. And he sent me to California to live my senior year in high school. And I know I probably gave you some gray hairs. Just doing dumb stuff. So I apologize in front of everyone. There was one time I was dating somebody that I wasn't supposed to date. It wasn't my wife. And they had my stuff packed. I got home. They said, Rob, you want to continue this? You're going back to Florida. It seems like you're not getting it. How many know you need tough love sometimes? Quit babying people. Give them some tough love. So he threatened to ship me back. And I said, no, I want to stay here in California. Can we give Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa the biggest shout? The biggest honor. Yes, we love you guys. You guys can be seated. Give your neighbor a high five. I miss you guys, man. I love you. You got your notepads out. Get your Bibles out, your tablets. Write down today's title. We're entering miracle territories. 
We're about to see the biggest miracles we've ever seen in this church thus far. We haven't seen nothing yet. The book of Haggai, Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 gives us a little glimpse of what's taking place this weekend and what's taking place in our church. If you're a church pastor watching, you're here, just receive the prophetic word. Just receive it. Anytime, remember, anytime you hear something good and you want it in your life, all you got to do is shout amen. So I double dog dare you as we're saying stuff today and the spirit of God is speaking. If you receive it, just shout amen. So I'm going to read this scripture. If you like something and you want something in your life, as I'm reading it, just shout amen. We give you permission. As you can tell, we're a radical church. So as we're saying stuff, just give a shout. Amen. Haggai chapter, a little glimpse of what's happening in our church. For this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. In just a little while, I will again shake the heavens and the earth, the oceans, and the dry land. There's going to be some shaking going on in your life. God is shaking up the dry land, and he's reviving your dry land. Can I get an amen? He's reviving. He's going to start shaking things up. I will shake all the nations. Our nations are being shook up. The United States of America is being shook up right now. And the treasures, I love this. Receive this for your house. Receive this here, the Way Road Outreach. Poland, receive this. We're going to finish that project. That church is going to get done. It will be filled with souls. Look at verse 7. I will shake all the nations, and the treasures of all the nations will be brought to this temple, says the Lord of hosts. Will be brought to this church in Poland. It will be brought into your church if you're a pastor. My cousin Penny, I know she's ministering to the teenagers. Fernando, receive this. You're going to get that parking lot. You're going to get that billboard that we talked about on the highway. The treasures will be bought, brought to the house of the Lord. I will fill this place with glory, all of our campuses around the world. And here we go. We have a grand total right now. We are at 137 churches. Give God a big shout of praise. You could do better than that. 137 churches. It, that's Africa. And we're, still, and we're still counting. We're still counting even today. I asked Jana and the team, you guys are going to Africa, what's our number? we got to continue showing this number because this number is going to have dot, 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 dot. It's going to continue going up. So this represents the United States, Tijuana, Mexico, and all the churches that we just adopted in Kenya and Uganda. Give Jesus a shout of praise. This glory will fill this place, this temple, says the Lord, all 137 campuses, says the Lord of heaven's armies. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord of heaven's armies. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord of heaven's armies. And in this place, I will bring peace. I, the Lord of heaven's army, has spoken the latter is going to be greater than the former. Until Jesus Christ comes back and, and we experience the great rapture of the church or until you and I die, we're going to see greater and greater miracles. You're about to see greater miracles in your family. This is a season of transition. This is a season where the Holy Ghost is going to show up in the middle of aisle nine on Stater Brothers. How many want to cast out demons in front of Stater Brothers? Because casting out demons, this is amazing here. I just left the youth conference in Arizona. We just had our youth conference. We had 130 teenagers the first night. The second night, we had 160 teenagers. That might not sound a lot. We only have 10,000 people in the city. That's more than 1% was in our building with a bunch of teenagers. Just teenagers casting out demons all night to one, two. It was, it was powerful. That's great. You know what's even greater? 
casting out demons on the corner of Baseline and E Street. And church is great. I love it. I get so excited. But casting out demons on the street? You're at your break room and you're reading your devotional. How many are still reading their devotional? Somebody goes, oh, get back on your devotions. Imagine. What we've seen so far has been great. If we stopped right now, generations would be talking about the way for a lot of years. But the latter is going to be greater than the former. Now, let me give you a prophetic word, which God's already speaking. It's prophetic, it's confirmation. As a church, we have just left our teen years. We have went from 19 just a few days ago. And now we're 20. There's a transition. What does that mean going even from 19 to 20? Write this down. What does that signify? This signifies transition and shifting. Someone say transition and shifting. We're growing to older, to young adult age. Some of us in this room, it's time to grow up. Look at your neighbor and say, grow up. It's time to get off the milk and eat some steak. It's time saying, man, would you just stop sitting for two days? It's time to grow up where you mature and you become an overcomer. The old things used to mess with you, but now you're an overcomer. How many overcomers do we have in the building? So 19 to 20, there's transitioning happening. In order to do great things for God, you're going to have to learn how to be flexible, be open for change, be open for a shift. If you want God to do something new in your life, you need to shift and transition. Me and my family went through a major transition these last couple of years. We went from California to the city life to have an in and out every 15 minutes, Chick-fil-A every 15 minutes, to the middle of nowhere. I got to drive two hours to get to the closest in and out. The mall, there is no mall. My wife, she loves TJ Maxx. She had withdrawals of TJ Maxx for, so I'm trying to call the mayor, I'm like, can we get a TJ Maxx for my wife? And the, and the community. People ask me all the day. People come visit me out in, in oh, there's my family. Oh, you put a picture of my family. Oh, okay. There's my family. <laughs> I see people staring at the screen. Yeah, there's my, my son Noah, Mariah, and Mariah, and Noah, and Jazzy. Love, love them so much. Thank you for putting a picture of my, give it up for my beautiful family. We had to make a transition. Things needed to shift. How did we get to Arizona? How did I, how did I get out there? Well, Pastor Marco gives me a call. I don't know if Pastor Marco calls you. It's business time. Sometimes I'm afraid to answer his call because... And I'm sorry. Sometimes I've ignored a few calls. I admit to all you guys. I don't know where he's going to send me. <laughs> so we're in the mall shopping. Two years ago, Pastor Marcus said, hey, you know about Arizona? I said, yeah. He goes, you got to lead that charge right now. Tell your family, you guys got to pack your bags and get to Arizona. I said, well, thank you very much, sir. I'll tell my family. I'll have an executive meeting, and we'll just move to Arizona. I was scared the first to tell my family because... It, it's not easy. Some of you guys, I'll just say it now, just let the Holy Spirit move. Some of you guys, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna relocate. I'm just saying, the name of the church is the way. 
this is not the way community church. Tell your neighbor, this is not a community church. Tell your neighbor, this church goes around the world. It's going to Jamaica tomorrow. Don't be scared of transition. Don't be scared to relocate. In that transition, in the relocation, is the fire of God, is destiny upon your life. Let's go to our scripture. I got to get to it. Let's go to, I got to give you the main script. Let's get to it. No more wasting time. Second Chronicles chapter 8. Let me show you really quick as you're turning that scripture. Let me show you that, uh, just a few pictures of the Arizona campus. As you turn to the Second Chronicles, take a look at AZ really quick. Just if I'm the worst picture taker, I should have way better pictures. But this is our Arizona campus, y'all. <laughs> coolest, coolest building we have right now. We have the nicest city in the in, in, in the whole area. People come and just take photos of the property of what God is doing. Now, this, this church, oh, yeah, that was our youth conference. We had a bunch of kids get baptized, and some of our California team went out to baptize teenagers. Now, our building, our building in, in, in AZ, it's a church slash movie theater. We have movies playing seven days a week. We don't play rated R movies, anything that's compromised. We, we have to call Disney and say, hey, we ain't playing that movie. By the way, Disney doesn't like us too much right now. They don't like it. But how many know it doesn't matter? We're not here to be liked by people. We're here to be liked by Jesus. Come on, give me some. Quit trying to please people and please Jesus. Quit trying to please people. So Disney, yeah, they, they don't like us. I don't know if we'll get another Disney movie. But anyways, we have four, the four rooms in that building. There's our, first, there's our first membership class. We had like 150 people join the church. Our, our very first membership so it's a movie theater slash. And then, see, God is awesome. And then I found out there was a bowling alley for sale. And I said, bowling alley, I'm not interested in a bowling alley. We're here to start churches. I said, no, nah, I'm not interested. They came to me. I said, no, nah, I'm not interested. Well, I, I, we got to get to Tucson. We got to keep on moving. I can't get, si I can't get sidetracked. He called me again. The owner calls me, which I know Pat very well. Became friends with him. He goes, Robert, please consider I said, why? I don't want a bowling alley. We don't want it. He was asking 1.8 million. I said, for sure we don't want it. <laughs> that was original cost, 1.8 million. I said, we don't, I, don't want your, I don't want the building. He said, Robert, they're about to turn the bowling alley into a warehouse. I said, okay. I said, wait a minute, warehouse? You guys are like the number one place, because our city doesn't have too much for kids, nothing for kids. I said, wait a minute. You guys are the number one place in this county to have a birthday party. Is that right? How many parties do you do a year? He said hundreds upon hundreds of parties in this place of children, because there's no place to have a birthday party. And you're telling me they want to turn it into a warehouse. I said, wait a minute, you got my attention now. You're talking kids. You're talking the next generation. And you're telling me that you have an offer to turn this bowling alley into a warehouse and lose the number one spot to have a birthday. Is that what you're telling me? He goes, yeah. I said, let me call my brother. <laughs> but while I'm talking to him, Pat, you can't be offered a $1.7 million. He said, I'll work on the price, Robert. You go talk to your brother. I said, Marco. Now I'm calling him. <laughs> Got to get some money now. <laughs> I said, Pastor Marco, there's our beautiful boat. We're, 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 look at that. We're remodeling right now. I, I didn't have time to get before pictures. This place was just, it was just old. It was just old. It's going to be, again, this and the church is going to be the two nicest buildings in the whole area. <laughs> so... We're getting it. We're hoping to have a, um, Mondo and the team is coming tomorrow to start the kitchen. We're hoping, hopefully, I will say maybe in August we can have a grand opening. Keep this place for parties. Keep this place to save souls. To me, that, that, that's cool. I, I'm not even into bowling that much. I don't, anybody like bowling? <laughs> Take pictures, babe. They can help us manage the bowling alley. They all need to relocate. 
They're getting too, raise your hand again. About half of them just went down. I ain't going to Arizona. <laughs> we ended up buying it. What was it for 700 and, what was the final number, Janet? 750,000. We ended up buying it for 750,000. The place is going to be worth about three and a half million when it's all done. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Second Chronicles, come on, we're having too much fun. We got to get to membership class. We got free lunch in about 30 minutes. Second Chronicles. Just a prophetic word, just going to read it. Over the way, over Poland, Destiny Church here in the second aisle. This is for you, Pastor. Everything we're speaking, you're under the voice. Pastors, you're under the voice of the Holy Ghost right now. When you're under the voice, when you're under the anointing, all this flows right into you. Give it up for Destiny Church right here in the second row. Just receive all. I know you are. Continue to receive it, Pastor. Second Chronicles 8.1. I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, what's the scripture for now? Well, what is it? He took me to Second Chronicles chapter 8. Look at what it says. Prophetic word for our church. It was now. Did they have it on the screen? Good job, media team. It was now. It was now what? All y'all looking for so many answers of life, just go to the Bible. <laughs> Quit watching all these TV shows. Some of you got, well, the Holy Spirit, just, some of you guys are still reading Terra Magical stuff. You're still trying to find an answer there. You'll get an answer. You're going to get full of demons. Our answer is in the Bible. Where's our answer? It was now 20 years since Solomon had become king. Let's put the 20 year vocab in there. It's now 20 years that Pastor Marco has been the pastor. It's 20 years. Continue reading verse 1. And the great building projects of the Lord's temple were building. Projects are starting to get completed. Our discipleship process that went up in the mountain, I think for three or four days, Gabriel, Mondo, team went up there, and they're finalizing and, and completing our discipleship program. Building projects, the Lord's temple, and his own royal palace were completed. We're in a season right now where God is going to complete some of our discipleship, and we're taking discipleship around the world. Other churches and pastors and leaders will begin to adopt and get discipleship back in their churches. Some will say 20 years. Yeah. Now, what happens after 20? Let's keep on reading verse 2. Totally prophetic, man, powerful. Solomon, he now turned his energies to rebuilding the cities that King Haram and Tyre had given to him. And he relocated some of the people of Israel into them. Yeah, some will say, let's go. I like that. Can you come with me to Arizona? I like your vibe. I like your energy. Let's go. Look at your name and tell them, let's go, man. Some of y'all just way too comfortable. Can you, let's go to adopt a block on a Saturday now. I'm sorry. I just went by Paris Hill Park yesterday. I cried. I said, what happened to this park? like Africa, it looks like TJ, I mean, I'm not down in countries, the rough of the rough, 
It's horrible. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. That was not there two years ago. That only happened two years or a year and a half. That was not there two years ago. So I heard about a new law that was passed and you can't do anything to take the homeless now. Get all that. God's kingdom is above every kingdom on the world. I went and I seen the dam that's there. They have a dam. If we get a major rain here, I don't know what's going to happen to San Bernardino. That dam is there for something. It's not there for trash. Trash like this. If you haven't been to Parasol Park, drive, but go under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Those ain't the same homeless people we dealt with 20 years ago. They're going up to my car, full of drugs, almost all of them. Full of drugs. Walking like zombies. Maybe we can't witness right now. You know what we could do? How about we go pick up the trash at Paris Hill Park? I got three amens. I know it. Uh-uh. I want to do this. I want a title. Go pick up some trash. Look at your neighbor. Go pick up some trash. Tell your neighbor you ain't all that. <laughs> We're going to rebuild the cities. Put up some cities. Put up some of the cities, media team. You guys got to continue looking at this. Keep on. Put up the cities. Moreno Valley, L.A. cities, Oakland, Stockton, Tucson, Arizona. New Mexico, Chicago, Detroit, there it goes. Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia. I told you earlier, Daily, we got to start more churches in Mexico. You got to keep on going. T time is running out. Time is of the essence. You got to keep on going. Start DGs in different parts of Mexico. How many want to reach Mexico for Jesus? Central South America. Start a DG and said, I, this lady is dangerous. I'm afraid to tell her sometimes because she'll just go try to do it tomorrow. She tells me, Pastor, look at these pictures. And she comes running to the office earlier. I said, get Pastor, what? And she showed me all these pictures of hundreds of people in the auditorium. I'm like, what is that? He goes, that's Mexico. I was just there yesterday for our anniversary. I said, weren't you here Friday? She goes, yeah, no tiene tiempo. We don't have time. We got to keep on going. How many know we got to keep on going? Look at your neighbor and tell them, keep on going. Hey, but to reach these cities, some of y'all going to have to relocate. Here we go. How many, let's be honest, I'm going to pray for some people. Let's get serious. How many of you know that you've been called and you're going to help us maybe? God has showed you. God has showed you that you're going to travel with us to help launch these churches. How many has gotten visions like that? Ray, get up to your feet. Get up to your feet right now. Only, you've got a dream, you, uh, Pastor Mark, maybe he spoke to you, whatever. Right here, I forgot your name. What's your name? Huh? Joseph, I met you in Arizona again. You came out to visit us. You got married recently. Congratulations. Your family, you got friends and family, I heard, through Drew, good company. You got family in Surprise, Buckeye, Arizona, one of the fastest growing cities in America right now. His family's there. I get a text a few days ago by Drew. They said, Pastor, you got to go to Surprise. I want you, Pastor Marco, walk the streets. We're getting ready to start another church. This thing's going to break out. I didn't know we are going to Safford. We got, we got this list of Stockton, Oakland. That's all good. That's dreams. Safford wasn't on the list. I didn't know Safford existed. This is vision. And we're looking at cities and we're praying. We're going to anoint you to relocate. Who knows what the next city? It might be Las Vegas. Las Vegas needs Jesus. All the ones standing, raise your hands. You're going to get the anointing to relocate. 
the anointing take over territory. It's already here. It's already yours. It's the churches. It's what, what God gave Pastor Marco. But God has told you, you've had dreams. He spoke, you got a prophetic word by somebody. And you're saying, yeah, I'm going to be traveling with you. Traveling with the church. Traveling to help launch these campuses. Raise your hands and say, Jesus, I receive the anointing of the Way World Outreach. You have spoken to me that one day I will relocate and I will continue to help churches be implanted all over the world. I will be a part of the church planting team. I thank you, Jesus. I receive my gift to travel with the Way World Outreach. I receive it in Jesus' name. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. Receive it. I know you got that anointing. I didn't even know I went to high school with you until I found out afterwards. You were trying to call me to get to Phoenix, Arizona. You got that anointing. You're constantly looking at cities. He's blowing up my phone. I love when people blow up my phone. I say, come on, what you got? And we didn't end up going there, but his, you, you already have it. It's on you. He was calling me because a pastor had got shot in Phoenix. He was preaching the gospel on a corner of a highway, and somebody blasted him on the highway. He said, Pastor Rob, have you reached out to the church? I said, I sure did. I called it the very next day. I talked to the senior pastor. I talked to the family, and we're praying for them. Let's go out there and do an outreach. God's going to use you. He's ready to use you. Get ready for the a great anointing, wisdom. Continue staying underneath the house. Can, I, someone told me a, a vision they had about something. I said, what do you think about this vision, Pastor? I said, it's good. I said, just make sure your vision lines up with the house. We don't need a thousand people going out to left field doing their own thing. I said, make sure the vision lines up with the house. Where does it line up with the house? Where does that line up with adopt the block? Where does that line up with church planting? Where does that line up with the anointing God's given? Where does that, if it doesn't line up, let it go. You're going to waste time. I don't know who that was for. Let's continue reading the scripture. We'll just finish. So verse, what did, did I read verse 2 yet? They'll be relocated. Here's verse 3. It was at this time too that Solomon fought against the city of Hamath. Zoba and conquered it. Here's a very good statement. You know it. Just confirms it. With every expansion and a gain of momentum, there will be extreme warfare and battles that we're going to have to overcome. We're going to take over properties and lands. L.A. campus, we declare L.A. campus, they will have a building in the name of Jesus. We declare that Gabriel and the team, they will have a campus in L.A. Because we're walking in miracle territory. They conquered, they fought. Verse 4, he, this is Solomon, he built Tadmar in the desert, built cities in the moth as supply centers. Tomorrow, meaning the desert. It's a deserted area. We're, we're going to continue going into deserted areas. That was so awesome. I was telling Pastor Marco because I haven't seen it in a while. And, and I loved it. Was it Friday night or Saturday? With, uh, Friday with Mike. He had a box full of drugs. I said, who would have ever thought that much drugs in church? When I, I just see drugs. I see a liquor bomb like in church? In a club? You know what it shows? We haven't changed. 20 years ago, the first or second service, first service, people, Donnell and his mom Angie, they were here when we first, give it up for Donnell and Angie right here. You remember that service, Donnell? People started throwing all the drug paraphernalia on the stage. When he was doing that, the Lord took me and rewinded me 20 years ago, our very first service full of drugs and alcohol. How many know we're on track? I love Tommy Barnett, the, the founder of the Dream Center. He said, man, you're not a real church until I see some beer cans and cigarettes outside the front door. 
This is a real church dealing with real people, dealing with real issues. So we're going to have supply centers. And verse 6, Pastor, for time, this is for all of us, destiny, Poland. Man, I love this. Verse 6. He also built Solomon. He also built Balath and other supply centers at this time and constructed cities. Man, we're going under construction, folks. We're going into cities. We're going to have construction. Where his chariots and horses were kept. He built, I love this, he built to his heart's desire. Oh, he just built until he couldn't even, give me that land. Give me that land. I want that one too. Okay, you can have that. We can have that. I want Chicago. You can have Chicago. I want Brooklyn. Oh, you can have Brooklyn. Oh, to his heart's desire. Oh, and that's what we're about to step into. We're going to write down cities and pastor, just release, buildings release, money release, money and properties and buildings and I don't know, bowling alley. <laughs> a bowling alley, good to our heart's desire. Let's have a bowling alley and let's reach all the kids. Let's be the number one place to have a birthday party for kids. Why not our heart's desire? Man, I love that. Let's stand on our feet. So in review... In review, in today's prophetic word, number one, get ready for major transitions and shifts. If you're not willing to shift or transition, you're going to limit God in your life. He says it, say yes. What do we do when God says it? How about when Pastor Marco calls you? <laughs> Definitely yes. Number two, God wants us to help rebuild the broken cities. Let's go clean up. Let's go clean up Paris Hill Park. Can you guys send me pictures when you all start cleaning that thing up? Can you guys send me some pics of the Block? You got to be prayered up. These ain't the same demons we faced 20 years ago. I know you know that. You're on the streets all the time. I know you know that. You know the streets way better than me. Number three, some of us might get relocated. And hold on. It's not just going to another city. You might be relocated maybe in ministry. From a volunteer to a leader. From a leader to a pastor. From a DG attendee to now having your own DG. By a show of hands, how many people do not have their own DG? Where you lead, you do not lead a DG. Raise your hand if you don't lead a DG you will start a DG in the name of Jesus. We thank you all these new DG leaders are going to rise up in this season. Transitions, relocation in Jesus' name. And with every expansion and the gain of momentum, extreme fight and warfare, fight. Arizona is a lot of fun, but I'm dealing with the religious spirit there. Uh, it's predominantly 70, 80 percent Mormons. They got the biggest temple I've ever seen in my life. I have Mormon leaders come to my church and stare me down as I'm preaching. Grand opening, one of the head guys was there. He showed up, a big, tall guy. And I asked everybody, I said, who's this guy? He said, he's the main, he's the main elder. I said, I'd love to meet him. That was at our grand opening. I said, how you doing, sir? Intimidated, just in stature much less the high elder of the area. And he asked me this, who sent you here? I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, what do you mean? He didn't know, how, how did you get here? And just like that, very weird, awkward, intimidated. So I said, well, God sent us. I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure what you're asking. I said, God sent us. He goes, yeah, but how did you make this happen like this? You've only been here for a short time. Why are all these people here?
I'll tell you why we're here. We take over. We take over cities. We have the take over anointed. We take over neighborhoods. We take over buildings. We take over properties. We take over bowling houses. He goes, who's your overseer? I'm like, dude, I don't even know what you're talking about. I said, Pastor Marco, he's right there. He's my overseer. What was going on? He was being short-circuited. He's like, how is this happening? How are they taking over the streets so fast? We're in a Safford High School. Mormon principal, and we have Bible study in the quad every Wednesday with all the teenagers. We're going to end with prayer today. How many is receiving the word? You guys receiving it? We're going to end the call right now for salvation. And I don't want to stop there. This service just adds a little more to it. We're talking about we're stepping in to miracle territories. Some of y'all need a miracle. Hey, that's what God does. He's in the miracle working business. That's what he does. In your marriage, you need a miracle. Your marriage is failing. Paying bills right now, just tough. You're in, you're in between jobs, careers. You don't know which way to turn right now. And you need a lot of direction from God. I don't even know what to do. If you need a miracle in any aspect of your life, in a moment, I'm going to count to three. You're going to raise your hand. In any aspect, money, finances, kids, I just need a touch of God. I need a miracle. Here's the second thing. I want to make sure that all of you guys are saved. From the front row to the back row online, I want to make sure you're going to heaven. Because this is all beautiful, but if you're not saved, nothing else matters. You guys, I don't know if you know Mr. Palomino, one of our leaders at Arrowhead, he's passing away. I just went to go see Felipe, and they called me, Pastor, I heard you in town. Felipe wants to see you. I went to his house and we sang worship. We led his whole family to Jesus yesterday in the living room. And I, when, I, when I'm there, I've done a lot of death, deathbed, hospital stuff. And I'm just looking at Mr. Palomino. And in my head, I'm thinking, he's about to meet Jesus any moment. We could only imagine what's, what... You can't read scripture enough to even grasp heaven. And I say, Mr. Palomino, he's going to be in heaven. But if you don't know Jesus, there is no heaven waiting for you. Pastor, I thought everybody goes to heaven. No. It's only those who have the Son, 1 John chapter 5. Those who have the Son have eternal life. Those who do not have the Son, they don't have eternal life. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. You need Jesus, not a religion. You can't die one day and you stand before God. He tells you, hey, why should I let you in? You can't say this. Well, I was a Catholic. There's nowhere in the Bible that says this, all Catholics go to heaven. Well, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist. Nowhere in the Bible says this, all Methodists go to heaven. It's all those who put their faith in Jesus go to heaven. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. You need a miracle in your life. You want to receive Jesus as your Savior. You want to be forgiven of all your sins. When I say three, raise your hands. One, two. Three, right now, raise your hand, raise up, raise up, raise up, raise up, raise up. I need salvation. I need a miracle. I need a touch of God. I want to make Jesus my Lord. I want to give up everything to follow God. Everybody that raised your hands, come on down. Come to the front. This is your day to get saved. This is your day to give your all to Jesus. Come on down. Come on down. 
Even if you didn't raise your hand, come. You need Jesus. You need a miracle. Come. Healing, deliverance, breakthrough. Come on, church is still coming. Come on down. I want Jesus. coming you guys I'm walking into miracle territories I'm walking into miracle territories you're walking into miracle territories love it come on down Chris Stone good to see you you're my head usher you're my head usher when Pastor Marco called me again to go start the Arrowhead campus Give it up for Chris Stone, our head usher at Arrowhead, where we first started years ago. Every head by every eyes closed. I know, we don't have enough altar workers, it's okay. If you're a leader, DG leader, if you can help at the altar, come down. We got a lot of people, they're not being attended to. Every head by every eyes closed. I'm gonna pray for salvation. And then we're going to declare a healing over your body, over your mind. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I repent from all the wrong that I've done. Forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. I am saved. I am born again. I'm on my way to heaven. Holy Spirit, fill me. Set me free from all my bad habits. Set me free from all my addictions. Now, if you need a healing, we speak physical healing in Jesus' name. Some of you guys are getting physically healed right now. If you need a physical healing, like we've done pretty much all weekend, put your hand on your chest and declare, I receive my physical healing in my body today. Cancer, you have to go. High blood pressure, you have to go. Diabetes, you have to go. Just name, just name it. This has to leave my body. I am healed. I am well. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. There it goes. Emotional healing. Emotional healing in Jesus' name. Anxiety, anxiety has to go. Some of you guys are getting anxiety attacks. Anxiety has to go. Raise your hand if you're struggling with anxiety attacks. Raise your hand if you're struggling. There it goes. Someone put a hand on her. She's getting set free right now from anxiety. Someone lay a hand on her. Set free in Jesus' name. Anxiety, you have to go. Anxiety, we speak to you. We renounce the spirit of anxiety. Say, I renounce the spirit of anxiety. Anxiety, I command you to leave my body in Jesus' name. There it goes. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. Bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.